steht in See, wo das kann jeder rakukt und nicht wenig. Als ich schnarr schisch mir jes, wo jelle faschischi, ist auch der Motiv, werden geöffnet werden, Marionis, und der Heim Rabo, als sieht nicht Rabe werden, Hochme Boelon, und der See redder befehlisch nie darf gehen wegen Hochme von Tero, Velikus, nos rezzig wegen Hochme Stan. In 1963, we were actually, at that time, starting to look for life on Mars. And uh, the Rebbe was terribly interested in that. On our very first meeting, I said, you know, there are those, and I used the words, there are those of your followers who say that a Jew should not be working in the space biology program, the exobiology program, because it goes contrary to Torah. The Rebbe stopped. One of those beautiful moments in time. He didn't smile. And he just thought. And then he came back with this and he said as follows, exactly the way I'm doing it. He pointed at me. He was saying this in Yiddish. You should look for life on Mars. I should keep looking. Keep looking for life on Mars. And if you don't find it, keep looking elsewhere. And elsewhere. And keep looking, because to sit here in this world and you say there is no life elsewhere is to put a limit around what God can do. And that nobody can do. Now the Rebbe didn't say there was life on Mars. The Rebbe just said that the job of a scientist who is trained in that profession is to keep looking for Und mit dort nicht gleich mit Seien, mit was wird er das ist losen, als alle werden anerkennen, die Minion von Wehäusel als Schem am Lucho, der Minion von Hawaii Chod und Schmei Chod. Das ist ein Lege, das hat Tee. Als Hoch mit Schizenis bringen die Reis auf Hebe von Gedusche, nur Adler habe, was mehr er mir weiß, das war mit Ossum, Als mehrer kommt der Hechrech, als ist Echot Boritz, hat die ganze Welt durchgenommen geworden, mit einischer Lachdus. The Rebbe had written a famous letter on evolution. So once in one of our discussions that I had with my Shifel, already close to my Shifel, I had a negative approach to it. I thought it was a little, uh, it wasn't adequate. It was too thin, it was too threadbare. And I told that to my Shifel, it's, it's not a great letter. Why don't you write the Rebbe and tell him that? Well, I'm not going to write to the Rebbe. You know, I saw the Rebbe. I consider him to be the Novi of our people before anything else. He's a Novi. I'm going to write him. He'd like to hear from you. you know, Dear Rabbi Schneerson, I saw this and this, and I have the following criticism to make about him. It was common to make about him. The Rebbe answered, but he never turned to the question that I wrote in this particular letter. So I wrote back another letter. You didn't answer the question already, which means, obviously, that you agree with my point of view. There's one letter that the Rebbe writes in which he says, essentially, it is not my job to win arguments. My job is to prevent the Jewish point of view and win adherence to the Jewish cause. And if I were to take issue with you on that letter, I might have pushed you away. But now that I see that you and your wife, I will return. And he goes ahead and answers the letter with a reasonable explanation. But I saw something extremely important in that letter. The Rebbe is demanding from scientists to teach science properly. In other words, to keep science from becoming a dogma. Science is a subject that must deal with probabilities rather than absolutes. He told me he studied uh, mathematics in Berlin, and he studied engineering in Paris. And he said that his only desire in his debates and was with, with other scientists was to be honest, to present the point of view. And even with regard to uh, the concept of uh, the motions of the stars and the motions of the solar system and so forth, that to be honest, you must teach that prior to the Copernican theory, there was a Ptolemaic theory. After the Copernican theory, there'll be another theory, a good, maybe a better. We're always trying to get closer to the truth. So 
This attracted me very, very much to him. Rado Asach was his own in the Greece, he spoils from the entdeckung in what he do in Chochmis Chitzini is Bishonim Achrini. Was be clawless as a song gave him in the last etliche zendlich year. And as a zach was seen, God of Stachas Hashemesh. The Rebbe was once talking, uh, what is a black hole? Black hole was once a sun. It was once a, 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 a body in the heaven that was burning like our sun, with hydrogen burning and providing light and heat excessively. And then over time, the fire went out and then the mass collapsed on itself. And now the mag it, be, it, be, one, it becomes very, very dense, very, very heavy. And it's so in, collapsed on itself that no light is emitted and light that passes through it is retained. Nothing is burned. The Bebe once referred to Jewish college professors as a black hole. At one time, they could have been light. They could have been a source of light and illumination, but they've collapsed on themselves to such an extent that not only do they not give any light, but any light that goes through them is absorbed. What their fun kumt menareis to their kenen in vosi der inyes edav zain di milchomo be derinu ze. Und dosi za dosi za dor. Was me hotem gegeben a zene meglachkeiten, was a noch kemal ni given, u ba vene seno horabi, u noch mer le tsar ha chi godel, nits min de meglachkeiten le gamre ni teis. He said, Did Rabbi Feller ever tell me what the Baal Shem Tov meant by Hashgoche Protis or divine providence? So I said, Yes. Now the principle of divine providence that the Baal Shem Tov taught is that everything that a Jew sees and hears is not by accident and it's not random, but is designed by heaven itself to bring you closer to Torah and to God. If this is true for everybody, how much more true for a person who works in a field like exploration of the stratosphere and traveling all over the world and meeting so many people. He said, you must have a wealth of stories and anecdotes and events and impressions, each one of them which has a special Ashkoch and Pratis. Keep a journal, keep a record of these stories and events. And then try and analyze to see what is the Ashkoch and Pratis, what is the lesson you learn from this thing. And if you can't do it by yourself, come and bring them to me and I'll work with you.